it's Cash. Welcome back. Thank you very much for joining me. I've got so much fascinating stuff today, including Chris Christie. There's obviously a lot of animosity between him and Donald Trump, so I thought I'd take a look at what that's about. Plus Rudy Giuliani, who's been indicted in Georgia now, and I thought I'd take a look at what his future holds. <laughs> Not much, I'm guessing. Uh, plus Ginny Thomas. She is possibly, possibly one of the 30 unindicted co-conspirators in Georgia. What's going to happen to her. Will she be indicted finally? Plus Roger Stone. I went into his consciousness and also took a look at his future. And also Jenna Ellis, Trump's former lawyer and also indicted co-conspirator in Georgia. She's gone over to Team DeSantis. Trump is refusing to pay her legal bills, of course, and she's having to crowdfund them. I thought I'd take a look at her future. Plus the US stock market, Britney Spears divorce, and a whole bunch more. Welcome to the new subscribers. Lots of you this time. It's great to see you. Uh, thank you to everybody who bought a mug or a t-shirt. I am so glad you like them. They're my little plaything right now. I absolutely love them. Uh, and thank you to everybody who left a comment as well. Your heartfelt comments about Olive and so on still touch me very, very deeply. She's just got up, actually. She's sunning herself on the balcony right now. Doing fine. Not great. Just okay. Although she is engaging in some really mysterious behavior that I've not seen before. And I thought I'd post a separate video about it in the next few days. Here's a clue. <laughs> it's not much of a clue, but it does involve that mirror and I don't understand what's going on. So I thought I'd do a video and you can give me your input on it and tell me what you think, because many of you have vast experience with cats. And uh, it's very, very odd. I don't understand it at all. Okay, so let's crack on with Britney Spears, who apparently is breaking up with her third husband, a guy called Sam Asghari, is that his name? Who's an Iranian model and actor. They have been together for 18 months as man and wife and are parting on the ground of irreconcilable differences, which is a shame because she had had the most astonishing life up to a point. She began in the Mickey Mouse Club and soared to selling a hundred million albums, sell out concert tours, and then everything seemed to start falling apart for a while. There were drugs, there was that conservatorship thing where her father took over her affairs, and so much legal stuff, and the media hounding her. I knew a woman who lived in a gated community uh, on Mulholland Holland next door to Britney Spears. And this woman would say to me, oh my God, I've had such a terrible time today. I got up and there were all these journalists on the other side of the fence peering over with cameras trying to take pictures of Britney Spears. It's hellish being famous in uh, America, really, but Los Angeles particularly. And she really, really suffered. Now she's breaking up with another husband. So I thought I would take a look at this and see what the relationship was going to be like between the two of them going forward. And when I did, immediately, there's Britney Spears and there's Sam Asghari, immediately I found her cowering under some kind of overhang. He was standing on top of the overhang, a bit like the Lion King, and she was cowering underneath in the shadows as though she didn't want him to know she was there. After a while, he decided to go looking for her. Taking advantage of this, she scurried over and hid behind a large rock. He walks out looking for her. She senses he's looking for her and she just crouches down. Like, ah, 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 I hope he doesn't see me. I hope he doesn't see me. But as she looks up, he's there peering over the rock. This seemed to have a tremendous amount of tension in it. Could simply be legal tension. Could be fear on her part that he's going to milk her of a bunch of money because that's the danger with these people. They may have prenups, but then they get into legal fights and so on, and they lose a lot of their fortune. But all I could say was, by doing these pictures, that Britney Spears seemed not necessarily terrified of this guy. I don't think that would be wrong. He's apparently a nice guy in so many ways, but she seemed worried. 
and hoped to stay out of his eye line so that he didn't do whatever she feared he was going to do. He had a certain strength of character and determination and wouldn't let go and could in the end prevail. Not because he necessarily is strong, but because she, in the pictures anyway, seemed so weak. I also took a look at the US stock market again. I do this at intervals, but I always tell you not to take it too seriously because I'm not very good at projecting financial things forward. There are too many instances of free will going on for me to get it really right. I did pictures where the stock market was in a little cart and expecting to go straight ahead towards a hill. But in actual fact, it was like a roller coaster. It went suddenly down into a dip and everybody was taken by surprise. The stock market is in a decline at the moment. But I think this is behind us now, that particular dip. And uh, we're going through those little tunnels that the cart went through. But I thought I'd take a look again and see how things might go. Because when I did the pictures about the US recession, I did say that it was possible, but probably unlikely and the US would pull back. And that's pretty much what's happened. But it only takes one sheep to alarm all the other sheep. It only takes one sheep to go, oh my God, there's a wolf coming. And then 10,000 sheep run that way after it. And this is the feeling of these particular pictures for the stock market because there's the stock market right there. It was walking forward and there were dark clouds coming. Like a dust storm almost. It was heading the stock market's way. The stock market started sprinting in the opposite direction, but there was no way it could outrun the dust storm. It was moving too fast. So in the end, the stock market crouched down, battened down the hatches, just waited. And sure enough, the storm blew over. It seemed pretty quick, actually. It blew over and then the stock market peered out onto the path and thought, oh good, the sun's coming out. Everything is fine. So if something does happen, if 10,000 sheep run that way, then it could cause a problem that wasn't there before, simply because the panic is catching. But even if that happens, all you gotta do, according to the pictures, is duck and cover, basically. Hide under a table with your hands over your head and let it go by, and then you'll be able to peer out and go, oh, things are better, and it will all be fine. I also took a look at Roger Stone, Trump's former advisor, and I've done him before, a while back. In those pictures, he was walking alongside Trump, and there was a pane of glass between them. Roger Stone was making points to Trump. But Trump, because he was on the other side of the glass, was going, Sorry, what? I can't, I can't hear you. What? As though Roger Stone was either not welcome anymore because of the trouble he caused, possibly, or Trump simply had tuned him out. But now Trump has cancelled this press conference he had fixed for next week. He was going to announce irrefutable evidence that the Georgia election was fake. But now some rascal has released documentary footage of Roger Stone, who must be so vain that he's even willing to allow a camera crew to follow him around when he's allegedly plotting the overthrow of democracy. <laughs> but it shows Roger Stone laying out the fake elector scheme before the 2020 election was even won or lost. It is really damning. So Trump has now cancelled his press conference for next week. Of course he has. It's preempted by the Roger Stone footage. And also, I think his lawyers were threatening to walk out if he went on TV and delivered even more self-incriminatory evidence. 
So I thought I'd take a look at Roger Stone again because he's an intriguing character. He's been at the forefront of political lobbying for a very, very long time, going back to Richard Nixon and maybe even before that. So he's an important figure. He's just a bit of a rogue, that's all. And so first of all, I went into his consciousness to see how he thinks. Why, given that he was being pardoned already by Trump, why is he risking going to jail by doing this thing. And when I went into his energy, there was a poll, like a wooden telegraph type poll. And Roger Stone ran to the pole and began climbing it. There was some kind of madness in his eyes, as though he was gleefully doing this. Whatever he was doing, even if it was illegal, there was something great about it. It was like Jack Nicholson in The Shining. There's something great about this. I'm loving it. It's madness in the eyes. And he climbed up to the top of the pole and thought, I'm Roger Stone. I'm smarter than any of them. I will outwit them. They can't touch me. I've got information on him and her, and I know this and I know that. They're not going to touch me, I'm Roger Stone. It was fanatical. It was frenetic. That seemed to be his consciousness. He believes in himself to the kind of degree that the rest of us would probably term delusion. But then I thought, given that Roger Stone might very well be one of the 30 unnamed, unindicted co-conspirators in Farney Willis's criminal proceedings in Georgia, I thought I'd take a look and see what his life is going to be like in the coming months. Will his luck run out? When I did, he was kicking a soccer ball around. This was the focus of his attention. It was something he was good at. He was passionate about it. And he felt really, really confident about keeping this ball under control. And this went on for a little while. All seemed to be well. Again, that kind of confidence that he had at the top of the pole. I'm Roger Stone. I can do what I want. I've always done what I want. And I always squeak through because I got the ball. And he kept on running with this ball. But the path got a little bit more complicated and circuitous further on. And after a while, this thing that he was so passionate about and so good at handling and manoeuvring dropped off the path. He was shocked slash disappointed. And he watched it go. He looked down and it was just dropping away onto the ground far below. It was like, oh, oh, that's not good. And when I went back up, the path where he was standing was all dark. It was cold and lonely and isolated. In fact, he began shivering. He hadn't faced up to this kind of reality in a very long while. Without his soccer ball, without the game, he felt abandoned, like he didn't matter, that it had all been a waste of time and completely pointless. Only the soccer ball and the focus he had on it made his life of value. So although in his consciousness he might convince himself that he's just the greatest, without that soccer ball, without that measure of how great he is at what he does, he felt like a lost man. He felt like somebody who had no purpose left and it was lonely and isolated and very, very shivery and cold where he was. Another person whose consciousness I went into, more out of curiosity than anything else, was Ginny Thomas, the wife of uh, the Supreme Court Judge Clarence Thomas. Because I've done her several times before in the pictures, and always she seems to get into trouble and then slide out of it at the last minute and go around and regroup and be fine. But 
once again, she could be one of the 30 unindicted co-conspirators in Georgia because she was apparently, allegedly, actively engaged in trying to overturn the uh, 2020 election result. When I went into her consciousness and looked out through her eyes trying to perceive the world the way she perceived it, I felt like I had a magnet inside my head. And that was okay. It felt heavy and uncomfortable, but it didn't really affect me unless I went too close to a piece of metal. So if there was a sheet metal wall, for example, my head started tipping over and being drawn to it. It was like, BOOM! And then there was another instance where it was like a curved wall thing. Uh, and uh, I walked past it and it was like, uh, BOOM! <laughs> it's like a head, because it had a magnet in it, was drawn to anything that was metal. Those could be conspiracy theories. Maybe she has that kind of mind, like some of my MAGA friends do, where they go for the most ridiculous explanation of anything first. They don't take the most logical, realistic, pragmatic approach. They go, what is the most ridiculous thing in this situation? Oh, okay, Joe Biden is only a hologram in the White House and he's really locked up in Guantanamo Bay. Yes, that's probably it. I think Ginny Thomas believed that for a while because my MAGA friends do. They get it from conspiracy sites and they come up with the most implausible scenarios, but that's the first thing these people believe rather than what's more likely to be true and uh, what is objective reality. And so that was it. Ginny Thomas had that side of her brain that she apparently just couldn't control, as smart as she is. It just went, Ugh! the moment she came close to an implausible explanation or situation. So I thought I'd take a look again at her life over the next few weeks and months, because she's got to be frightened, right? She's got to be scared of possibly being one of those 30 unindicted co-conspirators. And when I went into the energy, there she is, she was standing in front of a patch of woodland with lots of dark trees very close together. Most of them incredibly badly drawn, by the way. <laughs> but in among the trees was a dark shape. Something, some machine, was heading her way. She couldn't tell what it was, but it was mowing down the trees as it went. She could hear the roar of its engine, the smash of splintered wood. She couldn't see it, but it was heading straight for her. And as she moved back, the shadow of it, as it came, just consumed her. This was fear. It was in her mind. It was a projection. She had to get going. And she ran off and came to a ravine that had one single log going across it. So she balances across fast ha, 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 to get to the other side. And as far as I could tell, she made it. The machine was not going to be able to get across that ravine. So once again, like the previous two sets of pictures that I've done for her, she seems to wriggle out of responsibility. Based on today's energy, things could change. That machine could speed up. I guess it's Farney Willis or Jack Smith or whatever. But the machine could speed up and things could change. But as things stand right now, this snapshot of her energy, it showed that she got away by some rapid last minute self-rescue attempt and made it to a point where the rumbling machine that was smashing everything in its path couldn't get to her. She seemed protected by this ravine. Maybe privilege. Maybe who she knows. Maybe there's a deal. Clarence Thomas says, look, I tell you what, I will step down. I'm done with the Supreme Court if you will let my wife off the hook. How's about that? Because remember, he had those pictures where he was ice skating backwards and he hit a wall, which I assume were the revelations about Harlan Crow and everything that's come out since. 
and Clarence Thomas on the rebound went into that dark tunnel and things got worse and worse and worse. Those pictures do seem to be unfolding pretty accurately as uh, Clarence Thomas gets into deeper and deeper trouble. Speaking of deeper and deeper trouble, remember the pictures I did for Rudy Giuliani a few weeks ago where he was doing a dance on a path halfway down a cliff. But delusional, of course, because as he watched, the path he was on began to crumble. And he was crumbling towards him. So if he stood still, it would simply take him down. And that's what's happening. He has just been indicted by Farney Willis for allegedly conspiring with Donald Trump, John Eastman, Sidney Powell, and a whole bunch of others to overturn the election results in Georgia in 2020. So I thought I'd take a look at his energy again and see how his life might go. But these pictures are incredibly mysterious. I'm not absolutely sure what they mean. I'll show you why. Because there he is initially. When I found him, there were two doors and they were closing. They were like sliding doors and they were closing and almost shut actually. Rudy Giuliani was desperate to get through those doors. But the gap was not very wide. It was like, come on, I gotta get through. Uh. The bit I don't understand, as important as this seemed to be to him, was why he needed to get through. This opportunity, whatever it represented, was closing. And on the other side, in the room that lay beyond the doors, it was very dark. Why would he want to be part of something that was going to be harmful to him. It was sunny where he was and harmful on the other side. But we'll come back to these pictures in a second because I did Jenna Ellis's pictures. You know, she used to be Trump's lawyer as well. She now supports DeSantis and has had to crowdfund her legal fees because Donald Trump refuses to pay them. And I think she's managed to raise $13,000 uh, up to this point, and a thousand prayers. They asked for money and prayers. They got $30,000 and a thousand prayers. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny, it just is. Anyway, so basically she is in deep, deep trouble because she has been indicted by Farney Willis as well as an alleged co-conspirator. You know what's interesting about this? Trump doesn't pay certain lawyers the ones who were prepared to back the big lie. And I wondered whether the reason wasn't actually not that he was delinquent in his payments, as he so often is, apparently, but because of a brief knowledge of contracts. You know, I have a law degree. And in England, I don't know about America, but in England, when there's a contract between two people or more, for it to be valid... There has to be what's called consideration. In other words, something, and it's usually money, has to change hands between them. Like, hey, let's do this together. I'll give you $100 if you'll do it. Yeah, okay, I'll take your $100. Now we have a contract. But if he doesn't pay them, assuming he even knows anything about contracts, but if he doesn't pay them, can't he then say, there's no consideration? Why would there be a contract if I haven't paid them anything? No, 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 they just did this themselves. It's all unilateral. I have nothing to do with this. I wonder if that's the reason. Because his real lawyers, the ones who are going to court and representing him for real, get paid up front. They get their money. But these nutjob ones supporting the big lie get nothing. It wouldn't surprise me if that had something to do with it. But anyway, Jenna Ellis has massive problems. And so I went into her energy to see how things might go for her. And when I did, there were two paths. The path kind of went down and the path went up. But both, on the face of it, led to the same place. There were bars, not prison bars, just some bars blocking the way. If she went down the lower path, she came to the bars, but they were very close together, like the doors in Rudy Giuliani's pictures. And she couldn't get through. It's like, oh, let me through, let me through. So what does that mean? What is so appealing about the darkness beyond the bars that they want to go into it? Interestingly, the other path, the one that led up, also led to bars, obviously, but these were further apart. 
and she could walk through and get to the other side. Now, when she did get through to the other side, there was a very, very dense cloud of horribleness, possibly verging on beastly ghastliness. That's how bad it got. And so bad things lie in wait for her. But for some reason, the lower road just didn't work out. She couldn't get through the bars. When I did her pictures before, which I did a few months ago, she was feeling like she was in a straitjacket, trying to wriggle out. There wasn't a straitjacket, but she felt like there was. It's like, oh no, now I'm committed. Now I'm involved. Oh God, this is catching up with me. And she lay on the ground struggling and wrestling with this imaginary straitjacket. And a tunnel, which always means anxiety, worries, problems, was actually moving towards her. Even if she lay on the ground and did nothing, it was coming for her. And these pictures seem to reflect the same kind of scenario. When she got beyond the bars, there was a very daunting black cloud of, uh, as I say, beastly ghastliness. That's how serious it was. So back to the Rudy Giuliani pictures. He was desperate to get through those doors, even though what lay on the other side seemed incredibly forbidding. Maybe he thought that he could do a deal. It's like, oh, I can give you this information. I can tell you this. I'll come completely clean if you let me off the hook. And maybe there was a deal in the offing if he was prepared to divulge everything, perhaps he could get a lighter sentence or something. But the opportunity was only there for so long. And he'd left it so late that the doors just closed. He'd done everything at the 11th hour and it just didn't work out because he crumpled to his knees. Oh, I played this so badly. That's what it felt like. And the same, I guess, with Jenna Ellis. And finally, I took a look at the rivalry between Donald Trump and Chris Christie. Chris Christie, although he's running for president, was only at about 2% in the polls among Republicans. They didn't want Chris Christie as the nominee. Trump is about 52%, I think, and he's the guy the Republicans want. But Chris Christie has been incredibly vocal and the only candidate who is criticizing Trump outright. So he's now risen in the polls and I think he's at about 10%, which is not bad for this guy. But uh, I thought I'd put Chris Christie and Trump together. And when I did, Chris Christie had a sword, but it was a little stumpy sword. It was like a dagger in a way. And his adversary, I'm not telling you who the adversary is, you'll have to guess. But his adversary was enormous. And Chris Christie was just jabbing with his stumpy little sword, his dagger, stabbing the air. Wasn't even really getting to the target of his barbs. It was simply criticism, taunting, empty gestures. But he looked like he was doing a lot. He was running around, if you can imagine such a thing. He was running around with his dagger. Meanwhile, the shadow of his adversary loomed over him. When I did Chris Christie before, remember he was on that treadmill? Running, 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 running. And there was a big wave, unmoving, hanging over him the whole time. Very reminiscent of these current pictures. And ultimately, Chris Christie made a grab for the end of the treadmill, but was thrown off into the wave. In the current pictures, he was just running around madly, jabbing and stabbing, somewhat ineffectually. Just dancing, doing the dance. There was a bridge that led over to a new area. And he ran across there. And on the other side... There was, have you ever been on Dartmoor? 
in England, on the south of England. Have you ever been? <laughs> I'm sure most of you have. But there are mists and uh, it's cloying. It's damp. It's horrible. You have to wear a scarf over your mouth because you can't breathe the air. Otherwise, you'll get water in your lungs. It's that kind of mist. And that's what Chris Christie entered when he ran across the bridge. Yeah, he may have escaped his adversary over there, but he entered a period of uncertainty, of cloying oppression. Didn't know where he was going or what he was going to do, which would be the case if he lost the nomination for uh, the Republican presidential candidate to Donald Trump, which is incredibly likely. For all his appearances on television, for all his barbs and taunts and everything else, his uh, gestures had an aura of futility to them which would render Chris Christie uh, pretty useless. That's how it felt to me. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you would. Like and share the videos. That helps enormously, apparently, with YouTube. And you can follow me on X if you want, if you're still on that service. You can't follow Olive right now because nothing's particularly happening. As I said, I will make another little video explaining that mystery with the mirror that I simply cannot fathom at all. And I'll put that up in the next few days. You can have a look and give me your feedback on that. I would be very grateful for your input. Uh, but in the meantime, have a wonderful weekend and a few days. And I'll see you very soon. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.